Welcome to Noah Yachting's video check-in for yacht Mala Nevena. She has a 2017 Beneteau Oceanus 41.1. Come on board, let's show you how she works. To operate your engine, first make sure the boat is in neutral by checking this here. Press in the red button on the gear lever. Once it's depressed, you can move the lever forward to engage your revs either way without engaging in gear. Bring it back to vertical and the button should pop out you know you're in neutral. To start the engine, hold down on the power button to turn on the panel. Then hold down start until the engine fires. To increase your revs, push in the button, neutral, and increase your revs here. To stop the engine, hold down the stop button until the engine stops completely, and then hold down the power button to turn the power off to the panel. To operate your bow thruster, the bow thruster controls are on the port helm station. To turn the bow thrusters on, hold both buttons for two seconds. Now the bow thrust is on, you can use them. To thrust the bow to starboard, hold down on the starboard green button. To thrust the bow to port, hold down on the red port button. To turn the bow thrusters off, press again for one to two seconds. To operate the swim platform, ensure no one is standing on the platform and there is no extra weight on board and the plank is taken off. Hold up on this switch here. To lower the swim platform, hold down on the same switch. Ensure to lower it all the way down so that the weight comes onto the Dynex ropes instead of onto the hydraulic ram. The autopilot controls are located on the port helm as well. To engage autopilot, press auto and it will hold your heading. To increase your bearing to starboard, hold down 10 degrees to starboard and it will turn you to starboard. To go to port, place 10 degrees to port. Or to do it by single degrees, use the one buttons to port or starboard. Press standby to helm manually. Marla Nevena has two B&G GPS touchscreen units, one at each helm station. These are touchscreen and you can use your touchscreen to pinch to zoom and to pan through the different options. You can also use this to view all of the data coming into the different systems on the boat. 230 volts shore power is located here down by the port helm station. The main fuse and breaker for the shore power is located in this locker here, underneath on the port side. If your shore power is not working, check the connection on shore and check that the breaker has not flipped to off. If so, reset the switch. Also located in this locker is the emergency steering tiller. This is down here on the right hand side as you enter the locker. The emergency tiller input access is underneath this panel here, as is the cooking LPG gas. To use the emergency tiller in a case of loss of steering, put the winch handle into here to undo the panel. Place the emergency tiller over the rudder post and you can steer from here. Your diesel fill point is located in here on the port side and has diesel written on it. Be very sure to get these correct. The water fill point is on the starboard side here and has water written on it. These are tightened and loosened with the winch handle as well. Your LPG cooking gas is located here in this locker. There will be two bottles in this locker, your spear and your main. When changing bottles, place the nozzle into the bottle here and spin the bottle to lock in. So 
secure the bottle into place, turn anti-clockwise to open, turn clockwise to close. The extra equipment is located in the port and starboard lockers or lazarettes. In the starboard locker you have, in the starboard locker you have a 50 meter line, a 20 meter line and two spare ropes for lashing the dinghy. It's also the location of the emergency bilge pump handle. To operate the emergency bilge pump at the starboard helm, open the flap to the bilge pump, take the handle from the starboard locker, plug it in and then you can pump the water from the bilge manually. The cockpit shower is located here. Open the flap. This is the hose. To turn the water on, push this laterally. To turn it off, push it laterally this way. To adjust the mix, rotate anti-clockwise for hot and clockwise for cold or somewhere in the middle for warm water. Make sure this is off properly so that you do not waste your fresh water. In the port side lazarette or locker, you have the following equipment. Deck brush, spear anchor, hose for filling your water tanks, outboard engine fuel, chain for the anchor, pump for the dinghy, bucket, oars for the dinghy, funnel, and something random. Safety leather. Okay. No, you don't need to do it. That's right. right. And a safety ladder to retrieve people from overboard. When anchoring, come to the bow, open the hatch and secure this so that it does not blow in the wind. Remove the control. The controller has two controls, down and up. To lower the anchor, make sure the engine is running and the revs are up. When anchoring, make sure your engine is on and you have neutral engaged and increase your revs to two to two and a half thousand revs. This will help charge the batteries. Down. Remember to lower your anchor slowly as to not swing and hit the boat with the anchor causing damage. If you get to this point and the anchor is not falling, you need to help it across the roller. The anchor chain is marked with colors to show you how much chain is out. White is 10 meters of chain. Green shows 20 meters, yellow 30 and red 40 meters. Marla Nevena has 60 meters of chain in her bow. When raising your anchor, hold down on the up button. If the anchor capstan starts to strain, wait until the boat is closer to the anchor and then raise again. If the anchor comes up backwards or twisted, get the boat hook and turn it so that the point is close to the bow. When raising the last bit, make sure you go nice and slow as to not damage or overload the capstan. When finished anchoring, Bring this back to neutral so that the button pops out and then you can engage in forward gear. Marlon Davina has two water tanks, one in the stern which is filled inside the gas locker and the other here on the port bow for the bow tank. Each has water written on board so make sure you double check these before you fill water or diesel in any tanks. Your no yachting technician will check your sails before every charter to make sure they are in working order and in good condition. If there are any defects on the sails, they will note them on your check-in sheet. If you would like to check your sails, pull them out in control conditions with at least two people, mark any defects on the sails that you wish to report, take a photo with your mobile phone and report this to the office staff. When raising your mainsail, you have an electric primary winch here that you can use to lift your halyard. Wrap your line on here and then you have buttons one and two. Speed one is slower and more controlled. Speed two is faster. Be very careful when operating these electric winches as they are very strong. Make sure you are watching all the time what it is winching in. If something gets caught and the winch becomes strained, stop so that you do not break something. 
When raising your main, attach your main halyard to this primary winch and make sure your reef lines are open. When preparing to raise your main, ease your main sheet and swing the boom over so that you can properly prepare the lazy bag. As you are raising the mainsail, watch carefully that your battens do not catch on the lazy lines as it goes up. When unfurling your Genoa, take the Genoa furling line off the rail, open the stopper, and manage the line as it goes out while you pull in the jib sheet. Ensure to keep some tension on the furling line so that it rolls nicely around the furling drum. When furling your jib back in, close the stopper for the furling line and pull in on the furling line while releasing on the jib sheet. Ensure to keep enough tension on the jib sheet so that you roll the sail up nice and tight and tidy. If it's too hard to pull in the jib by hand, transfer the furling line to this winch, grind it in manually while easing the sheet on the opposite side. Inside the engine bay, you also have the switches for the water tanks. This is for the aft or stern water tank, and this is for the bow tank. I have one of these closed at all times and the other one open. This way you can manage your water. To turn a water tank off, rotate anti-clockwise, and to turn the other on, rotate clockwise. The emergency stop for the engine is located in the aft starboard edge of the engine. It is a large red button. To stop the engine quickly, you can access this from the aft starboard bunk and hit down on the red button. To reset it, push down and turn clockwise. The main engine battery and service battery switches are located in the aft port cabin. This is the switch for the engine battery. In this position it is on, in this position it is off. This is the main breaker for the anchor windlass. If you overload the windlass and it trips out, it will clip off here. You can reset this by pushing this back down to the on position. This is the main negative for the whole power system. And this is the domestic batteries. This is the off position and this is the on position. This is the breaker for the electric sailing winch. If you need to reset this because it is clipped out, Push in on the red button and reset the fuse. The emergency fuel shutoff valve for the diesel engine is also located in the aft port bunk underneath the bunk bed. When it is in this position, the fuel is off. When it is in this position, the fuel is on. Underneath the oven, there is one fire extinguisher located here and the gas shutoff valve is also under here. In this position, the valve is off. In this position, the valve is on, in line with the pipe. Turn this off whenever you have finished cooking and turn the gas off at the bottle. The main control panel is located on the port side of the boat right here. There's also the switcher here for the inverter plug. This plug here will run either here on shore power, off, or on number one, it will run on the inverter. This is the heater controls. Here you have the main switches for the 240 power. This shows that the water heater is off. Here the water heater is on. 
battery charger and the AC plugs throughout the yacht. All electric cabin lights are controlled with this switch here. Here you can charge with 12 volt power from the cigarette lighter input. This controls the fridge unit, auxiliary power, water pump, at the moment is on, here it is off. Bilge pump can either be on on or on auto and it will pump on the float switch underneath the bilge. Navigation instruments are turned on here. This is for the deck floodlight, anchor light and the navigation lights. On this side on navigation lights is for sailing and this side for motoring. You can check the levels of your battery, water and fuel here. Press the side you wish to view and it will show the status of that. Your VHF radio and stereo is located down here to the port side of the chart table. Here you can turn on your VHF by turning the power button and volume button, adjusting the channel. Channel 16 is the international calling and distress channel and channel 17 is RC marinas and many marina and port authorities around Croatia. Adjust the sensitivity here. And the stereo can be operated here as well. At the chart table we have the charts for the entire area. Inside the chart table we have the Adriatic Sea Pilot, the light lists and cruising guides for the area, manuals for the boat, and plotting and charting equipment such as dividers and rulers. You also have a flashlight and a spear flag. You also have a set of binoculars for keeping proper lookout. The safety equipment is located underneath this cushion and here. Amongst your safety equipment, you have a toolkit, first aid kit, boatswain's chair, the second fire extinguisher, flares, axe for emergencies, engine spear belts, and spare fuse for the bow thruster, impellers for the engine, survival blankets, fog horn, sea anchor drogue, day shapes for anchoring and motor sailing and life jackets. There are 10 adult life jackets on board. These will be out at the start of your charter so you can check these before you depart the marina. Also on this lock you have your harnesses and safety lines. Oh, that's weird. Marla ne uh, Navina. Marla Navina has one fridge. She is... Marla Navina has one fridge inside of the galley cabinet here. Lift up. Inside here you can control the temperature by this dial. We suggest keeping this around about the middle in order to save power. Marla Nevena has two bathrooms, both with toilet and shower facilities in them. The forward cabin has no holding tank and the waste goes straight through to the sea. The shower pump in the forward head is a push button time relay. Press this black button here and it will pump out the water in the shower. It will disengage after 10 seconds. The aft bathroom or head has a shower and toilet also. This one has a holding tank which is controlled in the aft starboard cabin. When the holding tank valve is in this position here, it is closed and will hold the waste in the holding tank. When it is in this position here, it is open and will empty the holding tank into the ocean. Make sure you do not empty this when you are close by shore or near other boats. The shower pump drain in the aft bathroom is also a black push button on a time relay. Push this button here to pump the water out of the base of the shower. Both toilets on board Marla Nevena are manual pump toilets. When using a marine toilet with a manual pump system, when it is on this side, this is to pump water out only. When it is on this side, it is to pump water in and out at the same time. If your handle is locked in this position, push and turn it clockwise to this position to unlock the handle. Similarly, to lock the handle, push down in this position and then turn to lock. When the pump is set to flush, bringing in water and letting out water, and you pump, the bowl will automatically rise to a certain level with water. To dry that water out, flick it over to pump out and pump all of the water out. When going to the toilet, flick to pump in. Pump 
pump some water through so that you know the line is clear. Once you've finished going to the toilet, flick it over to pump out. Remove all of the waste, change to pump in, and then pump 15 to 20 times to get the waste all the way up and down into the holding tank. Once all of the waste is gone and you have flushed through the system, flick back over to pump out and remove the water for sailing so that you do not spill anywhere. Once the bowl is dry, push down the handle and turn to lock. Remember, we do not put anything down the toilet that does not come out of your body. Toilet paper and other sanitary products need to go in the rubbish bins provided and then be disposed of on shore. Thank you for watching the video check-in for Mala Nevena, the 2017 Oceanus 41.1. Your technician is standing by for anything you may need. I hope you have an amazing week. See you when you get back.